This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Throughout the sordid tale that has been the insurrection, the attempted overthrow of the United States government by way of overturning a free and fair settled election, throughout all of this, there have been certain scoundrels in the mix. You got your Rudy Giuliani's, you've got your Donald Trump's and the the satellite orbit of idiots that, that surround him. But maybe none more nefarious than John Eastman, who was a lawyer a law professor, in fact, used to be at uh, Chapman University, coincidentally enough, where I used to live in Orange County, California. Professor Emeritus. And John Eastman is a special kind of sinister. John Eastman is the kind of lawyer that comes up with harebrained legal theories that, one, don't go anywhere because he's a a cheese-filled clown shoe of a human being. For one, John Eastman purported during the campaign, the, the Democratic primary, that Kamala Harris, the current sitting Vice President of the United States of America, wasn't eligible to even run for president because her parents are immigrants. It doesn't matter that she was actually born here. Her parents came here as immigrants, so... She's not eligible. Flies in the face of the Constitution and the the prescribed qualifications to be a president or vice president. But, you know, no matter. The Constitution doesn't matter when you're John Eastman. Democracy itself does not matter when you're John Eastman. He is the lawyer who devised of the fake elector scheme entered into a criminal conspiracy in my view, we'll be careful because he is a litigious lawyer, entered into a criminal conspiracy, allegedly, with Donald Trump to overturn a free and fair settled American election, an attempt to disenfranchise you if you voted for Joe Biden, to disenfranchise over 81 million Americans. And last week, the FBI served a search warrant and seized his cell phone. Here's a headline from the New York Times. Federal agents seized phone of John Eastman, key figure in January 6th plan. The action, now here, I'm going to play a little video from the the Midas Touch guys. Uh, I searched high and low. I don't know where they got the video, but they got it. The action suggests that the criminal inquiry is accelerating into the efforts to help overturn the results of the 2020 election. Because, well, we'll just play the video and we'll go from there. Here's the moment. I mean, I'm only playing it because it's just so tasty that there are consequences being served. Watch this. So go ahead and put your arms off for me. Can I see the warrant? Put your arms off for me. Can I see the warrant, please? I'd like to see the warrant. I'd like to see the warrant. I'd like to see the warrant. You see the warrant, sir. I'd like to see the warrant before you take my property. Sir, there comes the warrant right now, sir. It's right on. Here, it's the warrant. Right. I want you to see that they took my property before providing me with the warrant. I'd like to read the warrant. What this means is that it is perceived there is probable cause a federal judge signed a search warrant that the government has more than enough evidence to believe there was something criminal going on, that he acted criminally. And further, he's a lawyer who was working in service to a client. So the attorney-client privileges that would normally be associated with his work uh, are not applicable here because... You don't get to be a part of the bank robbery, and just because you're a lawyer, you don't have to, you don't get in trouble for it. And that's what this was. Stealing your votes. And further, I would point out that uh, he's scared. Because in true fashion, just like Jeffrey Clark from the DOJ, where do you run 
in the conservative media sphere, where do you run when you need cover? Where do you run when you need explanations that don't make any sense whatsoever? Tucker Carlson's nightly white supremacy fireside chat on Fox News. That's where you run. Watch this remarkable bit of video of these two idiots chirping back and forth like a couple of monkeys. The very reason we have the Fourth Amendment is to prevent that kind of abuse, and yet that's what they're doing here. And it's just another reminder to anyone who didn't vote for Joe Biden to erase your texts and emails every single day. And that is a sincere piece of advice I hope everyone follows. But they haven't charged you with a crime. They've given you no evidence that they're going to charge you with a crime. But they treat you like a drug kingpin or a rapist and seize your phone. It ca is this legal? Well, I don't think so. And uh, they forced me in the position. Look, I, as an attorney, I have ethical obligations to do everything I can to protect the privileged privilege communications with my clients. So we will be filing a, a, a motion. It's called a Rule 41 motion to retrieve my phone, to retrieve any information they've taken off of that phone that they have illegally seized from me. Now, I want to I want to point out one particular aspect of Tucker Carlson's words, and this is part and parcel pattern and practice for him. He tries to engender fear in his audience that these criminals in the Donald Trump orbit, that the way that they're being treated like criminals, that normal everyday viewers, they also are at risk of being treated like that. You got to delete your text messages every day because the Democrats are coming for your text messages. I don't know why I went into a Richard Nixon thing there, but it happened. Let's just move on. <laughs> There's no need for anyone to fear the government going in and getting their text messages. That's, that's nonsense. But it's a way for Tucker Carlson to connect with the audience and get them afraid and impassioned about this nonsense. And then when he says that it's a sincere piece of advice... We'll play it back here while I'm talking. As he says it, Eastman laughs about it. It's so insincere and hilarious piece of advice that even the dummy who's going for Tucker Carlson for cover chuckles about it. And then this, look, this is like a new thing. I haven't really noticed this before, but like when Peter Navarro was arrested for contempt of Congress, for defying a legally issued subpoena, Peter Navarro, former aide to Donald Trump, he acted like, oh, they, they put handcuffs on me. They made me do the perp walk. Yeah, you got arrested, brother. H how do you think the criminals are treated? And it's the same here with Tucker Carlson. They treated you like a drug kingpin. No, they treated him like someone who's being served a warrant. And when you go to the person that you're serving the warrant, you you check them for weapons, you go through a series, a protocol that the Federal Bureau of Investigations has followed for decades. It's not new, they're not treating him extra bad. But they have to do this because John Eastman knows he is in deep legal jeopardy right now. I'm gonna read a paragraph from a Politico um, opinion piece about exactly the kind of trouble he's in. In March, the committee argued, and by the way, by the way, the links to everything I, like I didn't read from the New York Times, but that link will be in the bottom of the description. If you wanna read this entire uh, opinion piece at Politico, it will be at the bottom of the description. I would encourage you to educate yourself. Listen, if you're coming to me for the way you should believe about things or strictly coming to me for, for your news, you're doing it wrong. Read as much as you can. Fill your brain with as much information about these cases as you can so you have a more fulsome understanding of the goings-on. Uh, reading from Politico, the, the headline here, John Eastman's criminal uh, exposure is real. In March, the committee argued in a court filing as part of a dispute over the production of Eastman's emails that there, there was evidence that he and Trump had engaged in criminal conduct based on several different arguments. That included, most notably, one, that Eastman, Trump, and others had participated in, quote, an aggressive public misinformation campaign to persuade millions of Americans that the election had, in fact, been stolen, 
and two, that they had interfered with the election certification process. The judge, now listen, here's where it is interesting. Here is where you need to start paying attention. It's one thing when Congress members who are on a committee say something in a court filing. It's a sworn court filing, it's important. But when a federal judge agrees, that is when your ears should start to tingle. That is when you should start paying attention. The judge agreed, concluding that it was more likely than not that the two had committed criminal misconduct as part of a campaign, quote, uh, uh, quote, campaign to overturn a democratic election using a plan that not only lacked factual basis, but also legal justification, end quote. And then the final sentence here, it was a plan the judge concluded that was in fact a coup in search of a legal theory. It was a, a coup in search of a legal theory. You've heard that said. You've heard the members of the House Select Committee investigating the insurrection. You've heard them say it. They're quoting a federal judge who said it's more likely than not that Donald Trump and John Eastman together entered into a criminal conspiracy to attempt to overturn the 2020 election. And he runs to Tucker Carlson. I would love to know, I would love to know what you think about this. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail, a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can absolutely email me the old fashioned email at daily at dollamore.com. Follow me on social media if you'd love to yell at me and tell me how terrible and wrong I am. That is a perfect place to do it. Also in the YouTube comments. I'm at Dollamore on Twitter, at Dollamore on Instagram, and indeed, just like the kids, at Dollamore on the TikTok. If you appreciate what I do, listen, I say this a lot. If there's somebody else out there, if there's somebody out, well, out there, if there's somebody else on YouTube that does more for you than I do, support that person. Throw that person a couple bucks a month or whatever it is that you can afford. If I'm that person for you, if you do appreciate what I do, if I bring value to your life, uh, whether that be through uh, looking at my stupid face and hearing my dumb voice or the things that I say, uh, I would appreciate your support. For as little as $1.99 a month, you can become a channel member. Click the join button below this video. Look into what, what it takes to be a channel member. Or you can go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Both those are great ways to help support what I do right here. Uh, we're getting to the bottom of this. So that is some good news in a hellscape of headlines over the course of the last week. Some good news. Anyway, I love you guys very much. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.